Paradise Island with stunning scenery and the true home of kickboxing. 18 top-class kickboxers from all over the world have come to the famous kickboxing resort, Super Pro Samui, to find out who is the very best in the light heavyweight category. For 14 days, they must train, sleep, eat and live together, and in the end, fight each other. Infusion. You gather 18 fighters from all over the globe. We have them train together. We have them live together. We have them eat together. We have them fight together. But only one gets to win it. So it's now or never. This is the battle of the warrior. Let it be known. And my advice is either go hard or go home. You better step up to the challenge or you'll get dismissed. And you don't get a second chance. Homie, this is it. Full Samui is where we train the best. Welcome to Thailand. Let's see if you can pass the test. Which one of these fighters is a champion? Who's gonna rise up and show them that it can be done? Forty thousand dollars. Now who wants it most? Let's see if you can do more than brag and boast. Kickboxing meets discipline. Step inside the ring. Let's go finish him. Last time on Infusion, Big Mo challenged Arnold Aborotov. They fought a tough and dangerous challenge, which was won by Big Mo from Morocco, thereby earning him the benefits, like three people in his corner and a cushy bedroom. Aborotov enjoyed lesser accommodation, which even included a faulty fan. Big Mo was off to a very explosive start, knocking Aborotov down in the beginning of the fight. The young man from London, and an Aborotov that was really sharp, wasn't it, by Mo? Very, very sharp. He's come right around nowhere as well, come nice and high. Maybe still a bit shell shocked from that knockdown. In the second round, it was a Borotov who was the better fighter. In the end, it was not enough to compensate the knockdown from the first round. So, Big Mo was the winner and moved into the quarterfinals. There you go then, it's moving around very, very nice. A long loop left up from Arnold Borotov. Jumping knee from Mo. Big Mo. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Just got a little bit out of the knockdown that did so well, and there's a very nice gesture, gesture by Shahid. Sorry. Mo showed the flag of his country by taking off his shorts. It wasn't appreciated by the crowd. In today's infusion, we have the quarterfinal between Mark Flicker, who knocked out Martin Jan from Germany, and Frank Munoz of Spain. No, it's not. That looks like that might be it. No, it's not. It's not over. He doesn't know where he's at. <coughs> Fight's over. Yeah, well, he right, killed by Mark. You know what? I thought you should go the other way, but fair play to Mark. I'm happy, but I think it's possible I do a, a, a better job. Purely allowed under these rules. I'll tell you something, though. It's absolutely been buzzing here in the Petch Boonchar Stadium and the Coast of these two fighters, it's buzzing in their air now, isn't this a really cracking contest, isn't it? Very, very aggressive. Here we have Frank Munoz, who defeated Sahak Parpian in his first fight of the tournament. Munoz, with a height and weight advantage, performed well. You can see happy smiling faces, the Thai people and all the Europeans have come to watch, Americans, 
Germans, the uh, whole nation's coming to... The, the line of Armenia, you know, really impressed with this young man. Going for it, really battling himself forward. Pushing himself on against them, really the natural, the bigger guy. Although the judges needed an extra round, it was Munoz who went into the quarterfinals to face Mark Flieker from Belgium. It's very, very difficult to, uh, to score, but... Oh, well, commiserations to Hat. What a great performance by him. I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of him. Uh, weight division, where I normally fight. So uh, I didn't make um, so many suffering so to, to give up the weight. Well, I was in the dressing room and he come to me and say, now you win my respect. And I, uh, this was, was nice to hear. But, uh, because, and uh, I heard from many people there was the fight of the night or something like that. And, uh, uh, just uh, after uh, I finished my fight with Hack, I already was uh, looking forward for my next uh, fight. Oh, he's in danger. Logis is getting a lot of punishment. It's like it's, it's near to go down. Mark is, is putting very pressure. Nice flying. I must watch out with him because he's explosive. And I, I, I can take him for sure. And I'm gonna do everything, but uh, yeah, I see he's not blocking any of this. So if he don't do this with me, at, at the second round he's gonna have problems with his legs. I'm gonna hurt him. Many low kick, low kick, and uh, no hard low kick, but for uh, do the point. No hard punch, but he worked. Yes, he is not uh, exceptional, but it's uh, good work. I can, it's possible I make the difference in the first round. Uh, Marfrida Marf is a favorite now. <laughs> nah, nah, this is a, sorry, but it's a little bit bullshit, you know. Yes. Frank is a friend of me. It's a good fighter. I respect uh, Frank a lot, but uh, it's for the game. Uh, I'm ready. Ah, now <laughs> the situation changed completely. You know, now maybe we are not friends, but now we are colleagues. You know, we are teammates, and I respect uh, respect him, and he respect me. I think the fight uh, between uh, Frank and me. Uh, I think uh, I win, and he's my opponent. So uh, no friends, no mercy. Uh, Frank is he prepared for the war, and me also. I live actually for fight, you know. This is uh, uh, the, my full life is fighting. So of course I enjoy it, but I I know I it's like uh, uh, all or nothing. So and I go for all. Uh, I see Frank. He prepare harder. Me too. And for me, it's a good fight. No, it's not a problem. Change the mentality for the fight with Mark Flieger because we become very good close friends here. You know, I've been all the week with him, going around the gym. He's helping me. I help you, him also. But I don't have friends in the ring. For, for me, Frank Munoz with Mark Flieger, it's a good fight. It's a good fight. So fight for life. No, I live for fight. So he's one of my opponents. I must put it away. I love you, mom. Uh, I love you, my wife. Uh, thank you, my friends. Thank you, Asim Jin, my coach, my team. And uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Enfusion. Thank you for your job. Thank you, everybody. Welcome, captains, at the diving contest. Uh, the winner can get his whole team to a boat trip. I'll either you start first, because you're the most experienced in this, so show us what you got. So, Alida, are you ready? Yes. Okay, I will ring the bell. As soon as you hear the bell, you start. Three, two, one, go! The team captains have a challenge to do. The winner of the challenge can take her whole team and a friend on a boat trip that afternoon to relax a little. The goal of this challenge is to find the impaling gear in the pool. 
When they've found it, they have to shoot the dummy and swim back as fast as possible. Maria Bastasin is not contesting this challenge because she can't swim. This means that the yellow team can't win the challenge. Swim back fast. Take off the diving gear. Do 10 push ups. Push up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, bell. And ring the bell. <laughs> Julie, are you ready? Yes. Sure? Yep. Okay, here we go. Go! Although it's Julie's first time to wear a diving suit, she's always the favourite with these challenges because she's such a great athlete. <laughs> Hannah's looking very tense, contemplating the correct manner to tackle this task. Okay, give me 10 push-ups, please. Julie's very fast, and it looks like her time is better than Elida from Holland, who's the more experienced in diving. Eight, nine, ten. Ring the bell. 145. Anna, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one, go! Anna is the only threat to Julie and her red team. She goes on the boat trip with her own white team. But already in the beginning of her challenge, you can see it's a bit slow. Edwin checks to see if they actually shoot the dummy under the water. After Hannah has shot it down, she can swim back. Okay, come on. Okay, give me ten push-ups. One, two, three... Four, Take off the diving five, equipment. Six, Ten push-ups. And ring the bell. Nine, ten. Ring the bell. Two minutes, forty seconds. So again, you won, Julie. Yeah, so uh, your reward is you can take your whole team tomorrow on a boat trip on the sea. So uh, have fun tomorrow. It's my first time diving, but I was trying to pick up tips. Like I was looking at a ladder who went first. I realised that she threw her um, strap in a little bit too fast as so she was struggling when she was putting it on. So I was trying to pick up what I could. And then as soon as I got to the far end and I come back, I just so wanted to win. I was just really going with my legs. And I think I knocked off a few seconds from her. So, yeah, really good. You know what? I didn't do the challenge today because I don't know how to swim. And although the instructor told me it is safe, because I don't know how to swim, I didn't want to panic in the water, under the water. Oh, yeah, I totally understand Maria's decision. She doesn't swim, um, but 
but I, I think she could have maybe given it a go, but she thought she may have panicked, so um, never mind. Another challenge to Red Team. I did so good, you guys didn't even see me do it, how fast I was. <laughs> um, I won the challenge yesterday, I had a boat, uh, boat trip, and I was allowed to choose one of the other captains to come along. Uh, I chose a ladder to come along with me. Uh, firstly, she's my roommate, so um, I've got to know her quite well. Uh, secondly, I knew Maria had quite a bad belly today, so I didn't think a boat would help it, plus she doesn't swim. And also, Hannah, she came third in the challenge, and she's not always um, too happy when she's got to put on her bikini, so I just thought a lady, a lady would enjoy it more. Uh, I think Julie chose me because maybe I'm her roommate. It's always hard when you four girls and uh, we come along all together really well, so you always have to choose one. And it's when when you share a room together, you have to be a little bit more friends than the other ones. Okay, maybe uh, you didn't hear yet, but. Uh, the challenge for the captains was again won by Julie. So uh, we're going to take her on a speedboat trip today on the sea. She can bring her whole team. So the whole red team will come. After the challenge, all fighters have a meeting in the cage where Edwin tells everybody that Julie has won the diving contest. This means that she can bring her team and a friend on the boat trip. Julie chooses a lighter to come with her and her team on the journey. Uh, I really need uh, Radev now because I have something to say to him. During this meeting, Edwin notices that Davi Radev from France is not there. Davi also missed the morning training. This is a no-no in infusion. Okay, I have bad news for you. We decided as a punishment you have to fight her this, uh, this week with Steve. Because uh, you're late, you missed the training. Normally it means that the competitor is sent to the airport immediately. But Edwin has a better idea. Because of this unacceptable behaviour, Davi has to fight Steve in a super bout. Steve, who didn't have the chance to prove himself because of illness, is eager for the opportunity. This has nothing to do with the tournament, but this is an extra fight for uh, Saturday. This is a super bout, which means it's not for the tournament. It's a disadvantage for Davi to fight Steve because the Frenchman has fought earlier in the week and must have some injuries that he has to overcome. Yes, I'm happy. My weight, I have the... Uh, my weight, it's uh, perfect. Uh, I'm ready for the fight. Finally, I win. I did a little bit more in the extra round. So now I just already looking forward for my next fight with Mark Frieger. Time for the boat trip. Omerajic from Bosnia still looks injured. Steve was also allowed to come because of his super bout with Radef. On the top of the world! And of course, Wendell Roche is showing off again. Beautiful day for a beautiful trip. 
and nice for the fighters to relax after a big week of training and fighting. Steve McKinnon's excited because now he can show what he's got. Tomorrow, uh, this morning, I, I missed the, I missed the, the training. Um, so when I arrive uh, late, um, Edwin said that maybe, uh, maybe we can, uh, I can have a, a little punishment. So he, he, he proposed me to fight, uh, to have a fight. He said, okay, you were late, so you have to fight. I immediately say yes. So uh, you know the things uh, get ready r rapidly. So now I, I, I'm about to fight against Steve. I'm feeling a lot better now. Um, my stomach's better now, and uh, now um, I've just got to get some food in me, get my energy levels back up, and I'll be ready to fire. Steve, uh, Steve is not the shark, and I'm not the bait. I, 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 I've never had the habit to be, uh, to be, uh, to be the little insect or something like that. I, I'm, I'm just like a predator. I want, I want to. I don't need to warm, and I just want to fight. Is it as serious as any other fight? You step in that ring; it's always serious for me. Yeah, but I'm. I'm wrapped that he's uh, stepped up to give me my opportunity to be seen because uh, that's what this is all about for me to just get get people to see what I can um, what I can give. Fighters, welcome. Today you are ninjas instead of kickboxers. You both get two stars, and you can deserve extra stars by answering these questions right. Myanmar is a country next to Thailand. But it used to be named differently. Can you tell me the name? Before it was called Myanmar. Vietnam? No, correct answer is Burma. Oh, uh, Burma. Marco, next question is for you. In what sea does Koh Samui belong? Burma. Correct answer is Gulf of Thailand. Frank. Who was it Showtime's first heavyweight champion? First champion. First heavyweight champion? Yes, from it's Showtime. Uh, Badal Hari. Correct answer. Next question. Which country has the biggest population? Which country? Yeah. Biggest population? Um, probably it's uh, China. Correct. Four fighters have won the K1 Max title twice. Name the four. The four fighters? Who have won the K1 Max tournament twice. K1 Max. Uh, Masado, um, Sower, Andy Sower, um, Mboka, Oswamu. There is uh, three, or there yes. is another one. Yeah. Another one. K1 Max fighter, champion. Ah, uh, Petrosian. Correct. Okay. All four. Last question. What's the capital of Australia? Sydney. Okay, like I said, you both have two stars already. You earned two extra, you earned one extra. So I start with you, Frank. I give you now four stars, and you will be the first one to throw. Here you are. The challenge for today is throwing Ninja Star to decide who has the three cornermen and the luxury room. Because Frank answered more questions correctly, he has more stars. But it's not as simple as it looks. Okay, two points. Only two points for Frank. Should be an easy score for Mark to beat. Your turn. You can choose three stars. Good luck. But it's not that easy. Mm. You know, for you, Mark. Frank, you win the challenge. And the China will explain what it means. Yes, you've uh, won the contest. You get to bring three corner people to uh, your corner on fight night. You only get to bring your own team captain. Congratulations.
Well, this challenge was difficult because I uh, uh, have uh, almost no idea about the samurai styles. Uh, the uh, today the challenge is uh, a ninja, ninja challenge with uh, stars mm -hmm. and uh, Frank Wynn. Frank um, shooting uh, stars. Well, yeah, but I tried it. I was the first contestant. Uh, and I'm, I scored more points than uh, Mark Flieger, so now I'm, I'm uh, good, I'm happy because I, I can choose uh, two trainers with me. I'm not a ninja, <laughs> not a ninja, I'm just a fighter. Supporting Mark, I'm gonna shout uh, for him in French, uh, to the, he lose the, the challenge today, so it's gonna be a... Uh, gonna be a one one person in his corners. I need more people in the corner for him too. I think he needs it too. I'm the French connection now. Uh, French connection uh, come with me uh, for the fight uh, in my back. We, we have a, a last uh, representant of the French connection in the tournament. So uh, mm. I think uh, my, uh, my roommate Marco is, a gr he is the surprise. I think he can be the surprise because he, he, he make a great chaos. Uh, I represent the French connection. Time for the fight, because in the end, that's what it's all about. The team captains are preparing their fighters. Spain versus Belgium. <laughs> There's always a little tension before the contest. Both fighters know there's a spot in the semi-finals at stake. So it's over to our commentator, Vinny Shawman. Well, making his way to the quarter-finals. The very talented, the Shakariki's very own, the Spanish-born Spaniard. From Barcelona, Frank Munoz, the Black Panther strikes against Mark Flieger. From Belgium. 95 kilo big boys and entertainment guaranteed. Both really, really nice guys. And people uh, get on people's nerves saying that. We obviously are. The white team. Hand of Maribeg. In the corner with uh, his Joey from Indonesia and Anna the Boratov from England is in its coach. The infusion show from Sweden, Hanna Maribeg. And Mark Vlieger, really, really great knockout against Martin Jan. But Kieran, we've seen we've seen Frank fight before, and he's very good, isn't he? Very sharp operator. He's, he's got a lovely low kick. He's good leverage, good height as well, and of course a piercing knee as well. And uh, very, very dangerous for such a big guy. Course, well, there you uh, go. Then makes his way into the ring here at the Petsboon Char Stadium. Very, very warm. And uh, our MC, Mr. Douglas McCarran, 
doing another sterling job here for us all that's infusement you at home very quietly spoken Mark Vlieger from from Belgium trains in Brussels and he makes his way to the ring with Maria Bastat in his coach and the Thai people really enjoying this entertainment the first heavyweight tournament ever to be held in Thailand and these two guys, very, very good friends indeed. Very supportive of each other, but it's uh, friends outside and war inside here. Yeah, absolutely, because uh, you know, both guys can right go at it. We've seen both guys display some superb action so far in this tournament. Has all to play for. Can't favour either of these two guys, can you? No. Well, uh, well Frank outpointing Pat Sack, Hack, pa Parian. And Mark Vlieger knocking out Martin Jan, so it's going to be very, very interesting. So it's Spain versus Belgium versus Sweden versus Canada. <laughs> this is why this show is fantastic, you know, and a lot of money is on at stake. A place in the, in the semi-finals to see who could be Enfusion's quest for champion, quest for glories champion. Well, you know, I expect... Uh... Munez not to change too much. He's to use that low kick score as nice points. And uh, so we took where goes straight into it, doesn't he? Yep, uh, no messing around. Using his height with that long knee. You see him use against Hack of Orion. Smothering the work at the moment, but a very, very dangerous mark with the right hand. Good low kicker. But Frank puts things very well. And that knee went right up the middle there, Kieran. Yeah, absolutely. He took it well, though. We talked about earlier marks. He's a dangerous boxer. Heavy hands. Very concussive punches. Nice jab from him, from Frank. Nice leg kick there to the leg of Mr. Viga. Another low kick there by Frank. Works that very well, doesn't he? Push off and then low kick. Yeah, that, you know, can be used and normally people use it. Pushes, use the leverage. Soon they stumble off, he just whacks that low kick right onto the thigh. Scores heavy and of course, uh, as the rounds go on, it's certainly weaken the, weaken the legs. Nice left knee up the middle by... Frank and the blue gloves making him miss and making him pay but these two are very very good friends dancing together at Beach Republic there's no dancing here is there mate no, absolutely not I mean Mark De Vlaigin is a tight guard not much has got through but Unez at the moment seems to be just working a little bit more scoring more with a variety of manoeuvres and uh, some lovely body shots just through the ribs of the Belgian man Certainly has piled on the pressure, letting some good shots off down the middle as well. That's the knee we talked about earlier, Vinny. Seems to sneak right through the guard. Sharp knee. He's the taller of the two. Dangerous knee. There you go again. And, uh, big shots going. I mean, big shots going in some smothering, but I think Frank's just getting a little bit more scoring, does it? Done, isn't he? Yeah, he's been an aggressive, aggressive aggressor as well. Scoring well on the low kicks and uh, holding on well, so covering the fists. They got a warning there from the referee trying to avoid the big bombs. Liga walking in, but not Liga. doing very much. He's getting scored on. He seems to be just coming forward, Vinny, and just uh, taking too many shots. Yeah. Trying to go for that big KO punch. Without trying to score the points and wait for it. Good shots going in from both fighters, but. Frank scored beautiful with that left knee there, Kieran. Long knee, another left knee from him. Nice knee back from Mark. Pushing up the ropes and a long knee. He loves using that knee. Just steps in, drives the left knee in. It's either the solar plex or onto the, onto the uh, opponent's chin. Good, Good low kick as well. Yeah, well spotted, mate. Real nice. Jab and a right hook to the body and leg kick to follow. Left hook on the side of the chin of... One else proves that uh, Mark Vlieger's still there. Very good round. I say that was Munoz's round. Yeah, Munoz's round. Vlieger seems to be uh, yeah, too stiff that round. Well, I think the first round was uh, just a little like a warm-up. Not much on both sides. Maybe a little better on Frank's side. But he needs to keep in on distance. And Marco mm -hmm. was just waiting for some things. I'm not sure what he was waiting for. But uh, she do a lot more to win this fight. <laughs> Thank you. 
Some nice work from both fighters. Lovely jumping knee that started at the beginning of round one. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, that knee was very effective the whole of the round. I tell you, he can't be doing some uh, too many extravagant things, you know, extravagant techniques because it's absolutely blistering. Pets from Charles David. Yeah, very, very hot. And, uh, I've seen some of the previous fights, these big guys, and last rounds go on. So get a little bit slower, and uh, shots do land. But um, to be fair to Munez, you know, he did the extra round, and he was still, uh, still firing at all cylinders. It certainly was. A very close fight with Sakhak Parapadian. So it's round two of this three three minute round action. Straight into it again, Frank. Scoring nice combination from him. It's well, right to very. It wraps him right round onto the floor. You can hear him here by ringside. But, um, Belgian man hasn't got an answer so far, has he? No. Seems to close up and uh, purely work his hands instead of any uh, variety with his legs or his knees. Yep. Right. So far, Moon is just uh, cruising. We saw uh, Vlag's previous fight. You yeah, can't let your hands go low because he will knock you out. Yeah. Superb low kick off that push. That's uh, Chakaruka style all over. You know, just working the hands, getting in close, pushing them off and chopping that leg. Taking that thigh out. Hard low kicks going in from Munoz. Walking in Vlieger. Doesn't seem to kick very much, Kieran. Maybe this uh, residue of the fight he had with Martin Jan, but he's not kicking at all. No, he's a bit of a punch bag. He's taking too much. Yeah, he's taking too much punishment of Munez. Munez really, really uh, doing a number on him so far. Certainly he? is. And there he comes back to life a bit. He needs to do more than that, though, Kieran. He does. He just showed it just a little glimpse. And when he does kick, look. Two kicks he's done. One was clean, the other one just took him to the floor. I see more of it. Sean is corner, just screaming out to him. Just keep throwing those kicks. Keep throwing those kicks. Yep. Those legs start to hurt now. They certainly are. You can tell. He needs to put his combinations together. He's defending that well, Mark, but he, he's not doing enough for me, Kieran. Certainly isn't. No, he's not. You can see there, just uh, Munez. It's a lovely low kicks all the time. It's landing. Yeah, he, he, well. he does need to do more, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, the Vlieger here seems a little bit desperate. Not showing much variety in any of his moves at all. He looks tired as well, Munoz. He's going well with the combination. It's very hard, though, when someone just keeps... Clumbering forward, he's just pushing him off the whole time, pushing a big guy off as well. Yep, this Belgian guy is uh, very, 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 big, very strong. Big looping right hook to the side of the head. Good combination there from Frank. That's what it's Mark's really not well. doing enough at all, Kieran. No, he's not, he's he's not doing anything, punishment. is he? He's taking quite so much punishment. He's lacked all the sting of his punches like he did in the previous fight. Munez really, really is... Uh, oh, Munez is running away with this round, isn't yeah, he? Two clear rounds. And that was even clearer in the first. Yep. A bit of a cut there, I think, under the eye as well, Vin. Might have been from a knee. Yep. To see how wild the Vlaiga gets. You, you see, the thing is, I think they're taking the eye off the prize, Kieran, to be honest. You know, the, it's that hot in there that it takes away all the... Man, this is your um, what can I say? It, it, it takes away all the ambition, to be honest, in the heat in there. But it's who wants it most and who's the best conditioned, because if you've just joined us here on Infusion, the reality TV show, Quest for Glory. I'm Vinny Showtime Shawman, and with me is ever my verbal sparring partner, the Double K, three-time world champion himself, Mr. Kieran Kettle. And Kieran, round three of this very, very interesting quarterfinal. Yeah, I mean, so far, it's been very one side of Muniz. You know, clearly ahead, uh, the Spaniards has been very, very strong, beautiful locus, lovely knees, well from the middle. The Belgian yet to open up. When he does, shows moments that he can bang, but hopefully he doesn't leave it too late. Frank uh, 
very, very sharp indeed, scoring very well. Having an easier fight here than he did against Sakhak Parayan. Yeah, I mean, that's for sure. I mean, he's stuck to his game plan, he's pushing off. Combinations going in, sorry, Kieran, combinations going in really sharp. And I'll tell you something, starting to hot up in there as well in the ring. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, sweltering temperatures in here, Vinny. No, last round, both guys tied, both big guys, Belgian guy. Liger keeps coming forward, Munoz keeps throwing, combination after combination, he's got his hard working. Yeah. Nice kick from Mike. You see, when he does kick, he does make a big impression. He's landed three, every time he's thrown a kick, it's three or four times over the fight. He's landed and put Munoz on his backside, but to be fair, you know, the cleaner strikes and the higher work rate has been from Spaniard. Yeah, nice knee there from Liga. He's a bit, he's a bit, um, samey though, isn't he, Kieran? You know what I mean? He just, he just do the same thing over and over again. But if he's not broken, don't fix it, as the saying goes. So, if it's working, it's working, isn't it? It certainly is. He's taking the uh, Belgian man apart, just pure low kicks, jumping knees, and then every now and then, just for the odd body shot, but it's working. Man. So there yeah, it very much so. Not much change to anything that's done from uh, his fight against Hack. Coming up, sorry, coming up to the dying seconds of this Three three minute round of fusion contest. Really, really great performance and a great show here. Controversy all over this one. And infusion. Yes, and it's very, very tired now. Look. Yeah. Hands start to dip a little bit. But to be fair, Belgium doesn't seem to be much of a threat. He's been a threat since the first round though, is he at all? When he does kick, he makes a good impression, but he just doesn't want to do enough of it. It's, it's a strange uh, Phenomenal, but there you go. He can only kick himself at the end of it when he loses it. Don't get a second chance, do you, Kieran? No, you certainly don't. A big tournament like this in Fusion. We're going to fight from around the world, fighting each other in Thailand as well. You know, the, uh, one of the capital cities of fighting, the stand up fighting. Well, let's be honest, it is the home, isn't it, of the, the home of Muay Thai. And, and that's what the kicking style is Muay Thai, so, but he's he really throwing the combinations in the Thai. But you're absolutely loving this. Here, dying seconds of this final round. And there you go then. But an emphatic win, to be honest, and an easy win for Frank Gunners against Mark Flieger. Yeah, he's tired there, but you know, he deserved that. He should be tired. He worked extremely hard. Many kicks was for heavyweight as well. But as many kicks he did, he should be tired. He's looking to replay there. The knee was beautiful. Long knee down up the middle from Frank. Yeah, superb time with the knee. Round one to three, great timing of the knee. Good take down there on the kick by the Belgian man, Liger. Straight up on his feet. I think Frank win the fight because he made more points. Yeah, uh, he fight. They, they both fight very bad. I don't know why. Uh, uh, what? I don't know what is his name. Marco. 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 Uh, I don't know what he did. He, did, he didn't fight. And uh, Muñez, uh, he make his points and uh, win easy. Here's a decision for our MC, Mr. Douglas McKinnon. The referee, Mr. Yup, will be down. Working very hard, as usual. Well, there you go, then. Frank Munoz makes his way to the semi-finals here on Infusion. Commiserations to Mark Vlieger, but he just didn't do enough, did he? No, he didn't. Frank Munoz takes the microphone and tells the crowd he's fought a good friend and asks, could they please show their appreciation? The fight's over, and in the end, they're good friends again. This is all part of Infusion. Well, there you go. Very nice gesture. I told you they were friends. And he did deserve the win, and it was a very, very nice thing to do indeed. And he goes on to the quarter, from the quarter to the semi-finals. The threat from Spain, the Black Panther. Is he ready to strike an infusion final? Uh, Frank, uh, ooh, uh, good job. Uh, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Uh, it's the life of who I are, you know. Uh, no problem. I fight again. Uh, my next fight, I win. I win my next fight. I'm here. You know, I'm here. I respect that I told you in the, uh, last night. I was uh, ready for a hard fight. 
I know he's powerful, but he could not be as fast like a hack. So I've been smart, you know, Conte with the right low kicks, I landed several low kicks in his, uh, in his leg. So I, this, I, I think, is, is gonna, is, has been decisive for the, for the judge. And also, a knee to the face, I cut at him. I, I've been much more confident. This is the most beautiful about kickboxing, you know. I gain now uh, 16 friends, uh, including Hack and the Turkish party, you know. We are like, uh, like brothers, because after fight, face to face, we are man, man of honor. That is nice. You know what, I think he didn't put as much pressure as he did his last fight. He did well though, I'm not, you know, it was a good fight, it was entertaining. Um, of course I would have liked for him to win, but you know what? Sometimes you don't win, but it was a great fight. Frank, uh, he did a great fight, he came out really strong, and uh, he had a lot of more combinations than uh, the Belgian guy, so... Um, and he gave a lot of low kicks and he trying to focus where he where the weak point on the Belgian guy. So uh, he, he was smart and he did really well. So he had a lot of stamina. So Next week on Infusion, will Wendell Roach turn his second chance in the tournament into a final four spot? I do my thing. Uh, he'll, he'll do his thing, but uh, in the ring, that's uh, that's what is gonna count. <laughs> to hang around with the guys and then you're supposed to fight with them in the ring. Um, maybe now I'm okay with that. I'm not a beginner. Tomorrow you won't be laughing anymore, man. Take your job yeah. seriously. Take it seriously, man. Yeah. He'll have to overcome tournament favourite, mighty Russian Ramazan Ramazov. It has all the makings of a classic clash. Will it be Wendell or can Ramazan live up to expectations? Find out next week on Infusion. Infusion. You gather 18 fighters from all over the globe. We have them train together. We have them live together. We have them eat together. We have them fight together. But only one gets to win it. So it's now or never. This is the battle of a warrior. Let it be known.